This is the second and last part for direct object pronouns, the lecture. And in part two, we're going to review a little bit of what we learned in part one, as well as talk about placement of direct object pronouns. Once you've chosen the right one in Spanish, where in the sentence do you put it? It actually does differ from English. And then we're going to do some examples to make sure you get the hang of it. I do highly recommend that after this lesson, you continue to practice because this is one of those concepts that because it's different from English, it requires a lot of practice um, in order to master. So here's an example. I buy some black socks. Very simple, concise sentence. I would like to break it up into a subject, a verb, and an object in order to review what we learned in part one. So the first thing to do I find and the easiest thing to do is to find the verb because the verb is the action of the sentence. It's sort of the movement in the sentence. I buy some black socks. Here the verb is to buy or buy. The next thing would be to find the subject and the way that we find the subject is ask ourselves who's doing the action here of buying and the person doing the action is I. So I is our subject. Then, I mean, you could also use process of elimination and see what isn't underlined, but if you really want to, without doing, you know, process of elimination every time, find out what the object of the sentence is, or the direct object is, look at the verb, ask yourself, what is being bought? And what is being bought here is some black socks. Now, this is extremely important because some black socks didn't, asked to be involved, they were bought. They weren't part of the action, really. They were being affected. They didn't say, oh, I want you to buy me. In that case, they would be doing the action. But no, they're just the object of the sentence. So let's look at this, the Spanish version of it, and break it down into the same parts. Yo compro unos calcetines negros. Again, let's identify the verb. ¿Cuál es el verbo? El verbo es compro, es la acción de esta oración. Then we're going to ask ourselves, ¿Quién compra? Who's doing the buying here? ¿Quién compra? Yo, yo compro. I am the subject of the sentence. And then we'll ask ourselves, ¿Qué se compra? ¿Qué se está comprando en esta oración? What's being bought is unos calcetines negros. So again, unos calcetines negros would be the object of our sentence. Well, if we've been talking about these calcetines negros, these, these black socks over and over and over and over, you might not want to keep saying black socks. You might just want to replace it. So if we were to do that, we would have to pick from this chart. So now, thinking of that example, I buy some black socks. Let me paint for you a picture. You really do legitimately buy black socks. That's your preferred type of sock that you buy. And one of these days, your friends are talking about someone else who buys black socks, and they don't realize you do as well. And uh, one of your friends says, who buys black socks? Sheesh. Totally judgmental. So mm, you want to stand up for yourself, but instead of saying, I buy black socks, that's a little repetitive. You might just say, I buy them, and confront your friend and hopefully not fight about socks. In that case, you're going to replace that direct object with a direct object pronoun, and the one that you chose is them, because socks is plural. I buy them. What's the problem? Now, in Spanish, looking at that sentence... Unos calcetines negros, that sentence, or that direct object, excuse me, is masculine. So if you've got to choose between these two, las is for feminine, los is for the masculine, and you're going to choose los. Now let's look at the sentence again. Yo compro unos calcetines negros. We know now that unos calcetines negros is our object. And again, because it's masculine, we're choosing Los to replace it. Let's chat about placement. In English, the placement of a direct object pronoun is not even an issue because it goes exactly where the direct object was. So if we look at that original sentence from the part one of this lecture, the boy tripped his brother. Who or what was tripped? 
the brother. That's the direct object. If I wanted to replace the brother, because we've been talking about this brother over and over, and I just want to say him, the boy tripped him, the direct object, the pronoun form, goes exactly where the direct object was in the sentence, right after tripped. Unfortunately for the English speaker learning Spanish, Spanish is actually a little bit different. It doesn't go exactly where it was, where the direct object was. It's going to go somewhere slightly different. So bear with me in this part, and this is the, exactly the part that takes some practice for those of you coming from English to learning Spanish. So in Spanish, the direct object pronoun, in English in this case it would be him, uh, which, by the way, if we looked at our chart, we would have chosen lo in Spanish. It goes in front of the conjugated verb in the action. Now, don't be scared by the term conjugated verb. Conjugated verb means the action in the sentence, the verb that is acting. Now, this sentence is simple because it only has one verb, so we don't have to think about which one's conjugated. There is just one, and therefore it's the conjugated verb. There always has to be at least one in a clause. So the boy tripped him. In Spanish, the him will actually go in front of the conjugated verb, tripped. So what you end up seeing is something that looks like this, the boy him tripped. Of course, that doesn't make sense in English, but it does in Spanish. And as you learn Spanish, you can't just pick and choose how you want to say things. This is exactly how people will understand what you're doing. So we take the him that would have been here in English and we move it in front of the conjugated verb tripped. Let's look at the example we posed earlier. Yo compro unos calcetines negros. We already decided that the los is going to replace unos calcetines negros. So instead of saying, I buy black socks, I'm just saying, I buy them. That's fine and dandy in English, but in Spanish, the them is not going to go exactly where unos calcetines negros was. It's going to go in front of the conjugated verb. Conjugated verb, in our case here in Spanish, is compro. Therefore, los is going to go right in front and say, yo los compro. I know that arrow is not very accurate, but it should read, yo los compro, if you wanted to say, I buy them. A little note about conjugated verbs in Spanish. It's very easy to tell which one's conjugated because we've dropped the AR, ER, or IR, and we've replaced it with a different ending. So, originally, the verb compro was comprar in its infinitive form. And as a conjugated verb, it's compro or compras or compra or compre, depending on the tense or whatever um, situation it's being used. So, voila, this is what it looks like. Yo los compro. Okay, let's do a little step-by-step -step analysis of what we just did. Now, if I asked you to take a sentence, find the object, and replace it with a direct object pronoun, this is exactly what you would do. Step one, right here, step one, would be find your sentence. Okay, once you find that sentence, you ask yourself, what's the object? Then, how can I replace it as a pronoun? And then you create your new sentence. Sounds easy, let's put it to practice in English first. I buy the green shirt. I'm thinking about that dog um, that was wearing the, the green shirt. So now let's buy that green shirt for that dog. I buy the green shirt. We've got our original sentence here. What is being bought? That's how you ask yourself in order to find the object of the sentence. What is being bought? What is being affected by this action and not deciding to be a part of it? And that's definitely the green shirt. The green shirt didn't ask to be bought. It just was. So what is being bought? The green shirt. The green shirt, we can replace it with it. It's not going to be he. It's not really an, uh, an animate object that we would have to think about personalizing it a little bit or personifying it a little bit. And we're going to place it right where the direct object pronoun was. That's English. Now, in Spanish, as you know, it's going to go in front of the conjugated verb instead. So let's look at that same example in Spanish. Yo compro la camisa verde. I'll ask myself, ¿qué compro? What am I buying? La camisa verde. La camisa verde, to be replaced into the it form of the direct object pronouns, is going to be la because it's feminine, and it's going to go in front of the conjugated verb, yo la compro. 
So let's do a little bit of practicing here. ¿Quieres la blusa? Do you want the blouse? When somebody asks you this, you don't go, yes, I want the blouse. That's too repetitive. You're going to say, yeah, I want it, or no, I don't want it, or whatever the case might be. So here we're going to just answer yes to all of these questions. They look a lot actually like the practice that we did in part one. You should notice that the sentences are similar. So, ¿Quieres la blusa? Sí, la quiero. We're going to put la in front of the conjug conjugated verb quiero. Notice, of course, that in the question I'm using the tu form of the verb because you're asking it to someone. You're saying, do you want it? Do you want it? But when you answer, you say, I want it. So you change the verb form to the yo form. Somebody asks you, ¿compras los jeans? Here in the second one, ¿compras los jeans? Sí. You need compro, you need the yo form of the verb, and then you're going to take los jeans and replace it with the word them. Yes, I buy them, and the them that you pick has to be the masculine for the word los jeans. Si, sí, los compro. Next question, ¿prefieres las camisetas? Do you prefer the t-shirts? This part should also be underlined, las camisetas. Now, here, if you prefer the t-shirts, you're not going to say, yes, I prefer the t-shirts. You will say, yeah, I prefer them. And the them that you're going to use has to be feminine because las camisetas is feminine. And you will end up saying, sí, las prefiero. Again, switching the verb to the yo form because now you are uh, answering the question rather than posing it. Okay, there is a second placement, I must warn you, uh, and this is where it gets a little bit more complex because some sentences have more than one verb. The thing is, they only have one action. So sentences only have one action, and sometimes they'll have other verbs that aren't really the action, they're just sort of thrown in for, for extra meaning. So in this case, the boy has to watch TV. Let's do our little analysis of subject, verb, object here. And first things first, let's find the verb. The boy has to watch TV. I don't know why he would have to watch TV, but hey, you know, my examples are crazy. So, the boy has to watch TV. What's the action? First instinct would be to say to watch, because obviously you're looking at the picture and he's watching TV, and then that would obviously be your first instinct. But no, he's not watching TV. We're just saying he has to do that. He's not necessarily doing it. So, our verb is actually has or our conjugated verb, our action is has. I want to point out that to watch is also a verb, which makes the sentence a little more complex. It's got two verbs. Now, in Spanish, when we use direct object pronouns, if there are two verbs just like this in a sentence, there are actually two places you can put that direct object pronoun once we go to replace TV. But let's keep going with our train of thought. So the boy has to watch TV. We identified has and to watch really as the verbs in the sentence, but has is the action. Now let's ask ourselves who's doing the action. The boy is doing the action, so he's the subject of the sentence. If I wanted to replace the boy because we've been talking about the boy over and over, I would say el, for example, is one of the, is, is really actually the only thing I could use, el. And then let's look at what is being watched, or what has to be watched, excuse me, and that's the TV. So that's our object, or our direct object of the sentence. Now again, English is very simple. If instead of saying TV over and over, I just wanted to replace that direct object with a direct object pronoun, I would say the boy has to watch it, and keep the it exactly where TV was. No complications. However, you already learned that in Spanish, that's not going to be the case. So TV is actually la televisión. So because it's la televisión, we're going to use la to replace la televisión. La. Hopefully that looks like a la to you. And we're going to put it in front of the conjugated verb. The conjugated verb in this case is our action, which is has. So we can put it there. But... If there are two verbs in the sentence, like has and to watch, two verbs, you've got two choices in Spanish on where you can put that direct object pronoun it. I wanted to show this chart again just to uh, fortify that it is going to be lo or la, and we chose la for la televisión because it's feminine. Feel free to pause it here if you need to take a look at this chart again. So let's talk about now again the two placements of a direct object pronoun if your sentence has two verbs. 
Because this sentence has two verbs, we could still use option one, which is to put it, to put the direct object pronoun in front of the conjugated verb has. But placement two is, again, if you've got two verbs, you've got a verb that's conjugated and one that's in an infinitive form, which is not conjugated and has the two or the, in Spanish, AR, ER, IR still attached to it, you can attach even further the word it or the direct object pronoun to the end of that infinitive verb. Now let's talk about and illustrate a little bit what that looks like. So going over those same steps again, now let's make our sentence that we had when we previously went over the steps, let's make it a little bit more complex. Instead of saying, I buy the green shirt, in the sentence, I buy the green shirt, buy is our only action. But here I'm saying, I want to buy the green shirt. Now we've got two verbs. We've got one action, want, and then to buy is another verb. It's not really the action of the sentence. It's another verb in the sentence. So we have want, which is conjugated, and to buy, which is not conjugated. Now, English, again, is very simple. It's not going to care whether there's a conjugated verb or not. So we would still ask ourselves, what is being bought? What is being bought is the green shirt. Then we would replace the green shirt with it. And then we would put it exactly where the green shirt was in the original sentence. Spanish, however, likes to complicate things a little bit more. So we're going to say, yo quiero comprar la camisa verde. So again, yo quiero is I want. Comprar is to buy. And then la camisa verde is the green shirt. I'll ask myself, ¿Qué quiero comprar? What do I want to buy here? And that's la camisa verde. We can replace it with la because it's the feminine pronoun. And because there are two verbs in the sentence, a conjugated one and an infinitive verb, we have two places we can put our little la over here. We can put it in front of the conjugated verb quiero, or we can attach it to comprar. But either way, you're getting rid of la camisa verde. Remember, the whole point is to replace that camisa verde part with la. So what you end up with, if we look over here to the right, yo la quiero comprar, that la is now in front of the conjugated verb quiero, or you can attach it to comprar, which is our second infinitive verb. So to review, if there are two verbs in, in the sentence, one being a conjugated verb and one being in its, in its infinitive form, which means it's still ending in AR, ER, or IR, then you've got two options on where to put it. If you only have one verb, you only have one option, which is in front of that verb. If you've got two, then you can put it in front of the conjugated verb or you can attach it, like in this example, to the infinitive. Now let's get some practice going to make sure we understand. In this case, we want to complete each sentence with lo, la, los, or las. All I'm doing is, is talking about an object here. And I want you to uh, answer my little incomplete question by replacing whatever it is I'm asking about with one of these pronouns. Now these pronouns, if we go through and we look at the list, lo and la can mean a series of different things. They can mean you in the formal, they can mean him or her, or they can mean it. Los and las can also mean y'all, if you want to replace y'all, like I like y'all, that's in the object of the sentence, or we can say, uh, or we can use it for them. Them, if it's a, all masculine, you would use los, if it's a mix of masculine and feminine items, you also use los, and if it's all feminine items, you use las. So if I go la chaqueta azul, so how about the blue jacket? You might say to me, I want to buy it, actually. So pretend we're shopping and I'm picking up items and I'm going la chaqueta azul and you're telling me if you want it or if you want to buy it or whatever the situation. So in number one, we end up with la chaqueta azul. I want to buy it. We're going to use la and we're going to put it in front of the conjugated verb. La quiero comprar. Unos jeans negros, now I'm picking up the black jeans and I'm asking you, you know, how about these? And you'll say, no los compro, no, I'm not buying them. In that case, we're taking compro, I put it in the yo form because I'm saying I'm not buying them, and them, because it's a direct object pronoun, goes in front of the verb compro. Number three, I'm picking up this red dress and I say, el vestido rojo? No lo tengo. No, I don't have it. 
which probably means you're going to buy it. But if you say, I don't have it, el vestido rojo is masculine, so picking lo would be correct uh, in terms of the direct object pronoun associated with el vestido, and you're going to put it in front of the conjugated verb tengo. Now, out of these three sentences, there is one, or these three examples, there is one that you could actually put the direct object pronoun in two places. Here we put it in one. Think about it, shout it out to the screen. If you said it's number one, then you are... And here it is. La chaqueta azul la quiero comprar. If you look at my sentence, la quiero comprar, I've got two verbs here. I've got the conjugated one, quiero, and I've got my infinitive one, comprar, because it still ends in AR. So another option would be quiero comprarla. Keep in mind, this would be one word because you're attaching the la to the end of it. And that concludes direct object pronouns parts one and two and the entire lesson for uh, this concept. So please get to some practicing because the more you do it, the more it starts to make a little more sense.